just like boat repair war paint. This week, Andy makes a lot of holes and then starts the process of filling them back in. First up, we needed to move the gauges for the engine out of the bottom of our cockpit. The concern is, is that if we were ever to take a wave into the cockpit, the water would make its way into the engine, which would be no bueno. We plan to take out the large gauge panel and then put in two small gauges higher up on the cockpit wall. The second part of the cockpit fiberglass project is to remove all of our current electronics. We're swapping most of our electronics out and moving those we're keeping, so we want to start with a fresh area. So here's the back side of the um, Westerbeek engine panel. You can see if I back out a little bit. It's right on top of the engine, right where the air, right above the air intake, and a bunch of wiring and hoses. And do not want to have any leaks. And it actually looks like there is some evidence of prior leaks here. It's going to pull this out, fiberglass it at back in, move the buttons to here, and install two small gauges <laughs> up top. So up here is the back side of the chart plotter. Autopilot. All autopilot is here. And then down here is the tri data, so that's the speed and the depth. And then it includes temperatures in there as well. So I'm going to start pulling these instruments out and remove this panel as well. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that we don't need or going to be using anymore. So. Two one hundred was probably a mistake. <laughs> These Westerbeaks have this like trailer connector type bolt. Um, it's actually high rec highly recommended if you remove this and just splice everything together. Oh, finger tight. That's, that, that's good. That's definitely good. Blast these holes in. Um, this is not a solid core. The laminate's not made up of a solid core. It's laminate overall. It's a half inch thick. It's got five sixteenths um, core in it. It might be kind of tough to find, so I'm gonna see if I can find a piece of quarter inch plywood down at the hardware store, and then we'll cut that to fill in all these holes. So then I'll fiberglass in those uh, those pieces of plywood, and then I'll come back in over, grind down everything nice overlap and then lay up some laminate on top of that. Pretty big hole, but gotta do it right. So I'm gonna cut out pores from this eighth inch plywood I got, quarter inch plywood I got to fill these holes in. Pop these out, and I gotta grind this. And we'll stick them back in with the tape them from the back side, from the outside, and stick them in and then put some thickened epoxy around the outside to glue the cores in. So then when I come back next weekend, I can fiberglass the outside, I can fiberglass the inside, and this will be taken care of. <laughs> but it's still pretty early in the day. Um, I'm going to try to get the core material glued in um, with some thickened epoxy. That way when we come up next weekend I can hit it again and we can get this watertight. So let's get these boards, everything wiped down with some acetone, let that evaporate, 
and then I'm going to tape the boards in from the back, from the outside in. So I'll put some tape here to support it, and we'll stick the boards up, and then I'm going to kind of just kind of smoosh thickened epoxy around all the gaps. So that's the adhesive fiber. It's just chopped up five west strands. Put this back on so you definitely do not want to breathe that. And that's a good consistency for filling in those gaps. Last week we removed an old sink through hole, and this week Andy started fiberglassing over the hole. The West Systems epoxy manual recommends that you grind outwards from the through hole on a 12 to 1 ratio. So Andy started grinding the hole down to meet that requirement. Alright, so I got it ground to a, approximately a 12 to 1 taper. So if like whatever thickness here, I ground out 12 times. I'm going to start measuring for how many layers I need. So the hole is 3 eighths of an inch thick. And each layer of the 17 ounce cloth I have will generate 30 thousandths, 30 thousandths of an inch of laminate. So laminated together. So to get the original 3 8 thickness, I need to do 12 layers, 13, 13 layers of the 1708 fabric. And I need to, each one needs to be progressively larger as it comes out. So we'll have the biggest patch on the outside getting progressively smaller. So rather than cutting, like holding up each layer of fiberglass and tracing it, I saw this trick that uses a piece of clear plastic as a template. So I'm just going to tape it up here to the hole. So I'm going to take a sharpie, mark the outside, and then mark the inside. So what I'll draw is 12 consecutive circles inside of here. And that's what I'll cut my glass to. This is not my idea, by the way. It's Mads from a YouTube channel called So I'm going to do. So I need 12 layers. I can split it in half, right? And then do. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we'll double up the last one. So this is the 600 gram biaxial, so it's stitched in two directions. So it's pretty thick. It's like otherwise, I was gonna have to use like a million layers of cloth. So there's the fiberglass all cut. I'm gonna wet out each sheet of uh, fiberglass and then bring it up and stick it on the hull. It's much easier to wet it out here. Mixing up the resin. We'll be posting a more in-depth using epoxy video soon that will be talking about ratios, types, etc. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested. So you want to do this in small batches rather than a big batch? Because um Especially with this fast cure hardener, epoxy is exothermic, so when it starts to cure, it gets warm. So if you have like a big batch, it'll kick off pretty quick. A lot of times before you even have a chance to work with it. So doing smaller batches is preferred. 
Once Andy finished laying the fiberglass, he covered it with peel ply, which helps prevent amin blush, which is essentially a wax that builds up while epoxy is curing. If you use peel ply, the wax builds up on the peel ply and you can just peel it off instead of having to sand it away. Let's pull the peel ply off. That looks pretty good, except I think it's a bit low. It's a little bit low. So we'll put a little bit more glass in there. I'd rather not just fill this entirely with filler, but I'm gonna let this fully cure for at least a week before I come back. With snow in the forecast and the boat still not watertight, Andy decided to cover her up. Next week, Andy finishes this week's fiberglass projects and starts on our salon shelves. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly videos every Sunday.